As a company grows, so do its needs and so does the complexity of its software. Real-world deployment automation can often be much more complex than what you read about in an Octopus Deploy tutorial. At Moonshot Innovations, our largest client needed faster, more reliable deployments for its platform, which has grown to support their business for well over a decade. We were tasked with making that happen and lived to tell the tale. Can it deploy? Absolutely. Here's how we did it. question why automate um, you want a repeatable reliable deployment um, and when you've got an automated deployment process that's inherently testable um, oh I thought Raju was fixing that um, so it's that's inherently testable and that kind of gives you a little bit better um, assurance that your deployment is going to be a success uh, with an automated deployment pipeline, um, you've got scalability in that you can use that pipeline to deploy to as many servers as you need to, um, and there's no um, there's no real increase in the amount of effort to deploy to one server versus n servers. Um, you have the potential for achieving continuous deployment if you want, so um, that is always pushing the latest and greatest out. Um, to whichever environments work for your team. That doesn't always work for every team, but if it works for your team, then that's great. With an automated deployment process, you can do that. Um, and also, uh, an automated deployment is no longer a highly technical task. So what's beneficial there is that um, it's, it's not always uh, best for the developer to do a deployment. And sometimes that, that might sound like a controversial thing to say, but um, in the DevOps world, we're thinking about bringing the experts to the table so that the expert gets to be the expert in their area of expertise. You know, QA needs control of their environment in order to properly execute their strategy. So um, when they want to put code out, when they want to put the latest code out to test it, um, they shouldn't have to rely on the developers to do that. Um, that shouldn't be a, you know, you go beg the developers to put the new code out to your environment and you know, we get to it when we get to it. With an automated deployment pipeline, you can open deployment up to QA so that they can um, do things like A, B, and code. You know, you have two different releases. Um, one release looked fine. They were ready to call that a release candidate. Another release came available and it broke something. So they're able to go back to that previous release and, you know, hey, in fact, this was broken in the latest release, but the early one was fine. So those are some reasons why you might automate your deployment process. Um, here at Moonshot, um, we've been working toward automating our deployment process since like the middle of last year. And um, some of the goals that we had um, for achieving an automated deployment are uh, deployment packages that we build one time. And then once that package is built, we go ahead and deploy that to dev. Uh, once we as developers are satisfied with the work and we get to the end of the sprint or whatever, or not to the end of the sprint, but to the point where uh, where uh, QA needs to be touching the code, we go ahead and promote that same deployment package to QA um, rather than going back to the source code. Um, so in, in that way, your deployment package kind of acts as a little mini code freeze. Um, you know that the code that's going to QA is the same code that you were just fine with in, in development. And once QA is satisfied that the deployment that they got is stable, has all the features in it, everything looks good, then we can promote that same deployment package to production um, so that we know that what's on production is the same code that QA tested and was fine with. Um, obviously, to do something like this, to promote the same deployment package from QA to production, you've got to have some kind of environment configuration going on, some kind of environment variable substitution. Um, Another goal was the flexibility to deploy one part of the platform or the whole platform. So we needed that modularity. I mean, you may have a service that needs to go out, but you don't need to deploy the entire platform um, in order to just get that one service out. So we wanted that modularity. And we also wanted to be able to handle uh, multi-tenant deployments because we have several different businesses that um, you know, use the same platform of ours. 
So we've white labeled our platform and we want to be able to get that code to all of them customized to their needs. Octopus Deploy uh, turned out to be a really great vehicle for getting that done. And I stole this from the Octopus site. Actually stole a lot of these slides from the Octopus site. Um, it says Octopus Deploy makes it easy to automate the deployment of real world ASP.NET applications. It's not just ASP.NET applications. You can deploy um, things that are not, you know, .NET centric as well. But, you know, we are a Microsoft shop, so it worked well for us. Um, so here I will cover a couple of concepts in Octopus Deploy uh, that'll allow us to kind of talk about um, how we used Octopus Deploy in order to meet our needs. Um, the first of those concepts is projects. A project is just, um, or actually, kind of, I got to kind of jump the slide real quick. Um, so projects in Octopus um, are a deployable unit, like a, a website will be a project, or an individual, an individually deployable service might be a project, or um, a scheduled task that you're going to deploy might be a project, or if you use Octopus to deploy a database, which we do, that would be a project. Um, and this is just a little blurb from Octopus to let you kind of know more about what what projects are. I won't read the whole thing out, but um, kind of give you an idea of what projects are in Octopus. A release is the deployment process, scripts, environment variables um, for a particular project. So I've got a project in Octopus for a website or what have you. I create a release of that project, and that release is a specific version of the code, the uh, variables that are associated and all that. Um, and uh, deployment target is going to be, uh, well, in this demo, this is the deployment target, a server that you deploy to. Um, pretty much it. In Octopus, you have the ability to configure environments. So um, I can set up several deployment targets, group them together in an environment. And that environment might be something like development, test, or production. And uh, once I have these environments set up, um, I can organize them into life cycles. So projects are uh, your individually deployable units. Releases are um, a particular version of the code for a project. So um, your environment variables and all that for a particular project. Um, deployment targets are uh, individual servers that you're going to deploy code to. And then um, with your deployment targets, you can create environments and you can organize those environments into life cycles. So that's kind of a lot. <laughs> but um, I've got some examples to try to help that make sense. Before I do that, though, um, in order to deploy code in Octopus, you need to build that code and um, draw on a blank. You need to build the code and um, package it up into deployment packages. So um, a deployment package just contains everything that's necessary to deploy your software, um, be that binaries or static content, configuration. Um, and then in our case, since we're deploying uh, databases as well, uh, our deployment packages contain DAC packs. And I don't know how many of you have worked with database projects, but um, a database deployment project will contain a DAC pack as well as a published profile. So um, Dylan, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about any of your okay cool in that case i've got uh i'll just show you guys real quick what the contents of a deployment package might look like so this is the database uh project for the little demo that we're going to run through and inside of the uh deployment package for this project You've got a DAC pack. How many of you guys have worked with database projects? OK, so you know the DAC pack represents the schema um, that SQL package is going to diff against the target, come up with a migration script. It also contains your pre and post deployment scripts and all that type of stuff. Uh, and so that's what's here, the schema of 
uh, what we hope our database ends up as. Um, we also have a published profile here. And this XML is what we use to, um, to parameterize this, um, this database deployment. I will show you what that looks like right now. I'm not gonna go into like all of the nitty gritty for every one of these, but um, because, uh, no, I cannot. <laughs> oh, there it goes, there it goes. So um, the, the reason I'm gonna show you like all the nitty gritty of this one is because um, unlike a web config or an app config file or a, an environment.json or or whatever, most people probably haven't seen a published XML file. Um, each of these little hash curly name, these are um, tokens that Octopus Deploy recognizes as places where it can insert an environment variable. So using this published profile, I can publish that DAC pack and um, customize the, uh, the deployment of the DAC pack by swapping out the tokens for actual variables relevant to the environment. And that's what's in a database um, deployment package. Other than that, your deployment package, like I say, it just looks like what you're going to stage onto the, you know, the server that you're deploying to. It, it's just that you've got some kind of a hook that allows you to, um, to uh, swap out tokens for actual values that are relevant to the environment you're going to. The PDB and D well, the DLL is related. Um, the PDB for uh, this package is actually not supposed to be in there. I was just in a rush. Good eye. <laughs> but. Um, it actually brings up a relevant point. I don't know if you meant to or not, but maybe you did. Um, when you build these deployment packages, um, the question does come up, how do I uh, debug a deployment package? And without going into too much detail, because you could do a whole top topic on, on just symbol servers, uh, the, the, the solution is to have a symbol server. And you can build and then publish your, um, your PDBs to your symbol server. Then after that, you can just connect your debugger to the symbol server, and it'll pull down the symbols it needs. So, but I didn't prepare that, so I don't know anything else about it. Okay, I'm kind of rolling through this right now. So, the scenario that I put together for you guys, um, it's a fake company called Real Fake Events. And um, Real Fake Events is a simple little event scheduling and tracking system. It's real, real simple and real, real fake. Um, it's comprised of a database, yes, a database, a stats aggregator, a cron job or scheduled task. Uh, this web API, an Angular client UI, and a legacy web forms admin UI. And um, the reason that I put it together this way is, you know, um, at Octopus, our largest pl software platform is um, kind of a bear. I mean, it's it's grown to support a business over several decades. So you've got uh, quite a mix of technologies in it. And uh, we've been able to, um, to get it automated, uh, with the exception of reports. But I swear, Bill, that's coming. Um, Octopus does support um, deploying SSRS reports as well, but we haven't gotten to it yet. There's a lot of work to do. So in order not to um, you know, put company code out there, I didn't know, you know what kind of areas I might need to stay away from or whatever, I just made this little fake project instead of you know, digging into our code. Hopefully this will keep things a little bit more streamlined. Um, with real fake news, we're deploying the database um, and the Angular client UI. And you may notice like both of those kind of have places um, with, a, with a web API, you've got an app config that you can parameterize. Um, with a uh, web forms app, you've got a web config you can parameterize. Um, with a scheduled task, I mean, you've got an app config you can parameterize there as well. But when it comes to a database, well, how do you parameterize that? Um, I tried to call that out earlier on with the published profile, that XML file that you can parameterize there. 
with the Angular deployment, um, because Angular builds themselves are environment specific, so you have to type ng build and then specify your environment. Um, what we did to get around that and give us a, a uh, deployment package that we can promote from environment to environment without building again is we created an environment um, called just DevOps. And inside of that DevOps environment, the environment variables are octopus tokens. So once you do your build, you do your DevOps build, and those octopus tokens are disseminated all over the built code, and then you can use octopus to swap out the values of those tokens, or swap out the tokens for real values. So that's how we did that. I just wanted to call that out before we get too into it. So here's our deployment. I know that text is tiny. Um, did not realize until I got it up here, but that is really tiny. So uh, first we deploy our service, and the steps there are we acquire the package, uh, we um, unpack the package and deploy it, and at that time we do variable substitution on it in order to customize the deployment for an environment. Um, and we do that variable substitution on all .config files. And then after that, uh, there's a configuration of the IIS bindings, and I'll show you guys that in a second. After that, we have the web forms UI. Uh, it's the same thing. Acquire the package, deploy with variable substitution, and the substitution happens on .config files, configure IIS bindings. Um, the Angular UI, acquire the package, deploy the package with variable substitution on JS and JSON files, and then configure IIS bindings because we're still serving it up with IIS even though it's a, an Angular site. The scheduled task, we acquire the package, stop and remove the existing scheduled task, and then we deploy the package with, with variable substitution on config files, and then we create and configure a new scheduled task. Octopus makes that really easy. They have some built-in uh, steps that do that for you. And then we deploy the database, and you know, in that, acquire the package, unpack the package. Um, variable substitution on the public at, publish XML, and then we apply the DAC pack to the target database, and uh, you know it does its thing. SQL package does its thing to build a migration script and apply it. With databases, um, even though you have the the ability to automate a deployment, um, it's it's a little harder to automate a rollback. Uh, unlike with code, um, if a deployment goes wrong in a database, you may drop uh, columns or whole tables or whatever and, and lose data. So uh, whereas with code, rolling back can can be just you know deploying the previous version. With a database, you really need to uh, restore from a backup if the deployment goes wrong. So I just wanted to call that out. OK, so we are at uh, the point of show and tell time. Here is Octopus Deploy. Yes? That is a Windows Task Scheduler. That's uh. That's that's what we get for cron jobs, and I will now hang my head in shame. <laughs> What's that? Is there another option? No, unless you want to make them in your database, yeah. and and then I really hang my head in shame. So um, this is our these are our projects. Remember, I said projects are individually deployable units. So uh, we've got a web API project, a public UI project. That's the Angular project. We've got a database project. This aggregator here is the scheduled task. And then we've got an admin UI, that's the web forms UI. And then we've got an event platform here that deploys all five of them. So you can one click deploy the whole platform or you can deploy one of these guys. So that's the modularity that we wanted. Uh, show you guys, I will show you, I will show you one process, just one, you can see the rest. All of the um, steps necessary to deploy this admin UI are taken care of in one step template, um, but it does a lot of things. So your deployment targets can be tagged with a role. And once a, a deployment target is tagged with a role, um, when you deploy every deployment target with the role, in that step of the life cycle, it's a lot, gets the deployment. So in the deployment of the admin UI, every deployment target in the current life cycle with the admin UI role will receive a deployment. The deployment will be from the admin UI package. The deployment will be, uh, will be targeting this directory, 
where um, I've parameterized the directory with a tenant tag, and we'll get to tenants in a second. The directory will be purged before installation. I'll be building a website that's uh, the name of which is parameterized with the tenant tag. The application pool parameterized with the tenant tag, the name of it, and then it'll run as a service account that is um, that is parameterized as well. We set up our bindings, IAS authentication, and then here is where the magic actually happens, where I replace the octopus variables in configuration files. Um, and that's actually, ignore this one. This is where the magic really happens, where I substitute variables inside of the web config file. So it's gonna be a similar process for pretty much all of these. I will show you the database project separately because it's the only one that's really very different. With the database project, the first thing you got to do is get your um, get your package pulled down, um, and it, the we're going to target all deployment targets with database as the role. In the process of pulling down the deployment um, package, I will do my variable substitution on publish XML files. So. Once the DAT pack is staged and the publish XML file has been um, uh, has been um, substituted, or once the environment variables have been substituted into that file, uh, now I can deploy the DAT pack. This is called deploy DAT pack better because uh, I want to be able to create a database if it doesn't already exist. So the um, the existing step template for this Octopus has a built-in step template. But that step template will not create the database if it doesn't exist already. So just a couple of quick uh, modifications to the PowerShell that backs their default deploy DAC pack, and I'm able to deploy a database if one doesn't exist. So I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. It needs to know um, the name of the step that staged the DAC pack, so that way it can find it. I tell it the name of the DAC pack and the published profile name. I the option of creating a report to just say, you know, this is what the deployment's going to do. I have the opportunity of separately generating a script that gets um, attached to the release as an artifact. So I can check that script out later on and see what happened. Um, in my case, I didn't want to do any of that. I just wanted to deploy. So when you deploy, it still creates the script. It just doesn't attach it as a release artifact. So if you want to audit what happened later on, you can get that migration script here. Target server name, database name, those are parameterized. And then I'm deploying with integrated security because you know I ran out of time to make a bunch of service accounts. So that is what, um, that's kind of a quick and dirty look at, um, at the process, at a deployment process. Um, Oh my goodness. Let's see, can this, oh my God, can I get this to work? What I'm trying to show you guys, okay, here we go. I've already done the development and QA deployments of the whole event platform. Um, I didn't think you guys wanted to sit there and stare at the screen while I did that. And here's the result of those deployments. Um, this is the development environment and this is the QA environment. Now they're on the same box. And the reason for that is because I only created one deployment target and tagged it um, with the correct roles and with the correct environments for everything. I'm gonna use the same deployment target for, for every part of this. Uh, here you can see that the deployment process replaced the token um, with our actual uh, connection string. 
I like to use integrated security in these kinds of deployments so that that way, you know, you don't have to worry about there being a password plain text inside of your uh, configuration file. All of the app settings, um, these values um, were specified in Octopus and replaced. And I guess that's about it. In the database, I've got real fake dev and I've got real fake QA. And those were created um, at deploy time. So real fake events has been going great. Um, ended up selling the platform to somebody. They wanted a copy of it. Um, so I didn't want to or I didn't have the time to rewrite the whole deal just to white label it. But the least I was able to do is, um, is parameterize all of the magic strings and everything like that. So that way I can, um, I can swap those values out with configuration. In addition to Actually, I don't have that yet. In addition to real fake events, which is my my company, I've added another tenant called Event Source. In Event Source, they want to do the same thing that I want to do, which is uh, manage events. So I make events, and then people say, "Yes, I'm going to that event." So I've sold them my platform, and it's parameterized. So all that I have to do is enter their um, Enter values for their um, their platform instead of mine. And during the deployment, uh, these values will be substituted for the um, Octopus token instead of my stuff. Real quick, I'm just going to show you guys um, the actual production deployment of this event platform. So I'm going to the production environment. I'm deploying to both the event source tenant and the real fake events tenant. The database web API, the aggregator, the admin UI, and the public UI. During this uh, deployment process, we have a little bit of time. I know I'm kind of breezing through because uh, I'm nervous. So there. <laughs> so um, you're going to take some questions. That's a really good point. Yeah, I did gloss over that, but you can uh, you can script your own step templates, and you can use uh, Bash and Python as well, um, and I think you can use C Sharp too, in addition to PowerShell. So they've got something for um, pretty much any flavor of scripting that you like. Please. Sure. That is a good question too. Uh, this this installation is in the cloud, um, so this is a cloud managed version of Octopus. You can also download um, the Octopus server and install it in house if you like, if you not want to host your stuff in the cloud. It's taking its sweet time. Let's take a look. 
Let's find out together. The, the other thing that I would point out is that if all else fails, well, come on, I know that's there. If all else fails, you have a raw scripting step And you can set up your parameters. You can script in line. Oh, they support F-sharp too, I didn't know that. You can script in line, so you can pretty much do anything that you wanna do. So for notifications, of course there's the scripting, you can do your thing. Um, they also do support emails. So um, you can enter your host and port and all that information, and you can um, send emails through a built-in um, step template that will do that for you. So you can send emails to notify people when you're getting ready to deploy. You can also um, insert manual approval steps so somebody has to come into Octopus and respond to that email um, in order to move the release along. Yep. So it's really customizable, I mean, really to your needs. Oh, yeah, we have there's a subscription section here as well. So Is that what you were looking for for the books? Nice. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just what works for you. So all very customizable and configurable. Um, so the production deployment is finished. And because I'm deploying to the same deployment target for everything just for the sake of this demo, um, here are the applications that were just deployed. Real fake events and event source. And what you'll notice is that The connection string has been customized to event source DB. Is event source is a, is a tenant. Um, and my company, Real Fake Events, has been converted into a tenant as well. So when I do these tenanted deployments, I just have to fill out the variable template for the tenant. And um, those values are what are used to, um, to parameterize my deployment.
let's see. All right, here we go. I think we covered this. Wow, I just burned through this. Interesting. Um, so uh, as you can see, I mean, Octopus Deploy is very customizable. Um, it pretty much supports whatever usage scenarios you may need it to do. Um, they have a huge library of custom step or of step templates, and you can make custom step templates if you like um, using different methods of scripting. Um, I guess that's about all that I had. I thought my presentation was a little longer than that. So, yeah. sure. How, how Octopus support is actually really good. Um, I have had to email them um, a couple of different times. Now, I've had weird things go on where, um, you know, something randomly broke, they pushed code, and next thing you know, something's not working quite, quite right. But I've always been able to reach out to them and get an answer. Now, they are based in Australia. So you have to give them a little bit of time just because they're probably asleep when you send that email. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've had pretty good support from them. Did you have a, a bad situation you'd like to share about it? Or? No, no, I, I use Australia. You, 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 you I've actually noticed this guy even better. We've got a part of my actually uh, started recruiting globally mm -hmm. so that you support 24 7. So you don't have that 10-hour, 12-hour delay. Yeah. Right. It's a lot more responsive. It's actually pretty amazingly responsive. For, they do. And their ability to get answers from, uh, you know, other areas of their company in order to answer your ticket is uh, pretty impressive as well. So the stuff you said you were going to have like MP6, a lot of them started with a fire package. Yep. Can you talk a little more to me from stuff that's in the yard, to me like Windows and that type of package and stuff like that? What's the intent here? What type of auto back to me? Oh, um. Yeah, so your, your, the, the package acquisition, that's the deployment package that I was talking about, where uh, that package is going to contain whatever needs to be um, staged on the server to run your application. So it'll, it'll have binaries in it. It'll have static files. If it needs to have static files in it, your configuration is going to be in there. Um, pretty much whatever you would expect to see, um, you know, in, inside of your, the folder that an application is being served out of, that's what's going to be in a deployment package. Is that deployment package Octopus-specific? It, it, they have a format. They have, they have an Octopack format, but you can also use NuGet. You can also use zip. You have different archiving formats that you can use. Yep. Yes. And Octopus also has an internal feed that you can use as well. You can publish. Cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole library of um, of uh, as far as I know, they're all vetted. But I tend not to use the community step templates myself. So, you know, I'll tend to write my own, or else use the built-in ones. Okay.
Okay, that's good to know. I would hate to tell you guys, yes, they're vetted, and then you get in there and. Absolutely. Of course, me, if if I've got time to vet somebody else's code, I would just write it. <laughs> but that's me as a code Nazi. I can't help it. <laughs> um, what else? What other questions do you guys have? In a way, in a way, but you know, they still need the 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 concern there is you give somebody that view and then they see that something has changed, but they don't see the work items that are associated, um, or maybe they do see the work items that are associated, but they don't understand the details of those work items. So. Um, it's it's a great it's a great way to communicate with a technical project manager. It's a really great way uh, to get yourself into hot water with a non-technical project manager with a quick mouse finger. You know what I mean? But that 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 is true. That uh, dashboard is there and it's very helpful. So to take a look at the dashboard, we see that the event platform has been deployed. Um, this little badge right here tells you that there was one tenant that could receive this deployment, which is true because I only have the one development tenant, um, one QA tenant, and then I have my two production tenants, real fake events, and uh, event source. So this lets you know that everything across the whole system is up to date with the latest and greatest, which is version one. So good point. Why are Because I prefer to um, use the same process across the entire life cycle so that that way I know that I'm testing what's going to go to production. You see what I mean? So in my dev tenant here, I filled out the variable template. And it's the same variable template that I filled out for a production tenant. And I know that no matter how weird and situational their code could potentially get behind the scenes, and I don't know anything about it, I know that I am testing the exact same process. I'm getting a tenant's variables, and I am customizing the deployment package with the tenant's variables. So then what's the Yes. Yep. And well, and potentially the infrastructure. Because remember, you have these deployment targets, and I've only got one deployment target. It's my laptop. And on that deployment target, I specified that my laptop is the deployment target for dev, QA, event source, and real fake events tenants. I could just as easily have had four separate um, deployment targets and, and Send each tenant to a separate one. I just the deployment targets may not all be the same. Um, what weirdness are you referencing? Oh, what I was talking about wasn't necessarily the the environments per se. It's more about okay, so um, outside of tenants, outside of a outside of a uh, tenant variable library. Say I just have project variables and I use different, um, you know, they've got different scoping options that you can use for uh, project variables. Um, a lot of the scoping options aren't available if you're using a, um, if you're using a, um, a, a, a um, environment variable library, if you're using an environment variable template, I'm sorry. Um, a lot of those options aren't available to you, so I want to make sure that I'm using the I'm using the method that I'm going to use in production. A, an example of a place where um, scoping options are different between project variables and tenant variables. Um, 
you don't have the option of inside of a variable template. And this is one thing that bothered me about Octopus, which I'm a fanboy of. But here inside of this variable template, I don't have the option of saying this is the tenant tag for this scope, where a scope might be an environment or a deployment target or what have you. I only have the one value, no scoping. So in, in order to handle like load balanced environments for um, in multi-tenancy, you end up having to create a load balanced like octopus environment um, where I have production environment and production load balance environment. Anyway, those kinds of those kinds of differences in scoping options that are available, um, those are kind of the reasons why I, I prefer to just do things one way. So. Yes, you can do that. Yes, but that's a that's a that's another area where I mean I'm glad you pointed that out because there's some there's some issues with variable scoping that we didn't end up touching on because I'm using um, um, variable templates here for the tenant variables, but inside of a project inside of project variables, I mean you can scope things a million different ways. You can really wrap yourself up in knots with you know what's substituted into what and you know when it's scoped this way or that way. What's the value? Um, you have to be very careful and disciplined in, in how you scope those variables. Are there any views or are there any like static configs you can see where it just lays out everything you configured? Um, like the clicky clicky UI? There, there are. You can export um, JSON that contains all that. There's an API as well okay. that you can use to get access to that information so you can build your own UI. Um, there's a lot of ways to get the information that you want. Yep. It's pretty nice. Your whole your whole UI is API very nice um and there's a client for that as well i can't remember the name of it octo well there's octo exe but that's uh that's more limited than what i was thinking of there's some open source stuff going on where um they make parts of the api available to you in different ways Hush. Yes. It is. So, guys, that's what I got. Um, are there any other questions? Well, so my biggest recommendation is typically, you know, you can solve a lot of those kind of problems by breaking things down into smaller pieces. Um, like if I were, if I were to do the whole 
event platform is just one giant chunk. One, not only would I lose the ability to deploy just one little module if I needed to, but if something were to go wrong, if something were to break the build or break the deployment, you know, that just really adds a lot of difficulty to trying to troubleshoot it. It sounds kind of like something similar to what you guys are doing. I, I'm not really familiar with, you know, what you would be doing where you're deploying something that ends up as a PDF. If you could give me some more details on that. When I hear swarm, I automatically want to run away. But in general, with some of the custom office stuff, you have to be careful with how you manage to return those things up and whatever. You may be trying to run or other other things that might be a Oh, I see what you're saying, and yes. Absolutely. to then go ahead and do remove the limit. They were doing 250 databases at the time. They removed this limit because so we started trying to do all 2,000 of them. And what would happen is that if they didn't find out, they would send back to the error level back to them. And so then we ended up in this split configuration where we're not, all the databases are not updated. But the deployment, for the whole process of the site. Because it ate the last exit code. Yeah. So manage your exceptions. <laughs> Yeah, what's the deal? No, no. It's, I'm glad we're able to have like a conversation about it. I think Octopus is a great tool. I mean, it's just, it's one of those tools where you can really shoot yourself in the foot if you're not, you know, really diligent and careful and you make sure that you do things, you know, one way, you know. Um, I guess just working clean is a common theme in dev. So, well, guys, that's all that I have. I don't know uh, how to wrap this up other than thank you for coming. Yeah, that's safe.